I'm not exactly too sure the actual process of this, but I've always suspected it. My sandbox games have prepared me for life. I'm just gonna roll roll with it. Look, I've brought you a bottle of the most ambrosial alcohol around. May you fight the biggest battles of your life with it. Ah, good old herbal schnapps. This stuff goes. That stuff goes right through my gears. Finally, my life has a meaning again. Thank you, magic guy. Here we go. Down the neck with the stuff, and then to battle. A great man once said, "He who fights can lose, but he who doesn't fight has lost already." What? What is happening? I'm not working anymore. May you find peace in eternal standby. Okay, now I've finally got your alcohol. This hatch is emitting a strong smell of booze. Give me that booze. Serve your new master and stand up. Another fatal downfall due to alcoholism. How tragic! Oh wow, we have a glitch. Yuck. It stinks terribly. He should really treat himself to a shower again. I did a short test run and I've reloaded the game and it hasn't reset the graphics for some reason. But we need to shave this mole. For some reason this, this game has an obsession with giving haircuts to people lying on the floor, either dead or unconscious. Now I'll let my artistic streak run free. There, that's a modern mole haircut. Okay, um... Yeah, originally he was supposed to have a full head of hair, but... Never mind. Let's get back to the mushroom cave. So we need to make this perfume, so we can get through this mole city. The pot is empty. Okay, so we need the lard. Out of the pot, into the pot, this unsaturated neutral fat can receive the smell of the aroma carrier. We have our alcohol. The ethanol will later take on the smell of the fat. And the hair. If those smelly hairs are no aroma carrier, then I've run out of ideas. With this, I must smell like a mole soon. Oh yes, and some water. H2O obtained by a thermal separation process. I hope that means distilled water. Ugh, ugh, it smells like a wet dog with cheesy feet. <coughs> ugh, ugh, that was heavy. But now I smell. No. Stink just like those moles. Now nobody will stop me anymore. Every woman will lie at my feet. Every woman with pointy claws and black fur, that is. I brewed my eau de taupe in this. Are we done? I hope so. Hey, you furry little diggers! Huh? Halt! Who goes there? Why can't I smell you? I'm Sergeant S, Special Forces, Covert Operations Division. Covert Operations Division? Never heard of it. Highly classified mission. Code name: Printer's Pie. Code name: Printer's Pie. Okay, okay. Carry on, soldier. 
Maybe you'd better blow your nose then. Are you trying to pull my leg? There's nothing wrong with my olfactory organ. Where can I find your leaders? Our leaders? They're your leaders as well, aren't they? Uh, of course I meant our leaders. I've got to deliver an important message. That's strange. Very strange. How can you forget where the council room of our old ones is? Are you sure you belong to us? Oh, come on. Don't we all forget something from time to time? We can't leave our post right now, but go and ask our colleague over there in the watch room. He should be on his break now and be able to show you the way. We could claim to be drunk. Where's my hat? You've lost your helmet. A soldier always has to take care of his equipment. According to martial law, embezzlement of federal property is punishable by, well, let's just say it's frowned upon. <laughs> Go find your helmet at once. Hi, it's me again. <gasps> Why are you just standing around here? Guard company, fifth company, soldier, proceed. Aliens are attacking the magic world. I'm sorry, but invasions don't fall under our responsibility. Go and appeal to the old ones, so they can delegate the issue to a subcommittee. Meanwhile, we'll ward off all danger from our proud Talpa people in the course of our guard duty here. I've got to go. At ease, soldier. Hi there, furry little man. What? Who are you? Do you belong to our company? Sure. I'm Sergeant S. of Last Keg Command. Where's my hat? You've lost your helmet? A soldier always has to take care of his equipment. Go look for it at once. But these guys don't seem to be wearing any hats well. Hi there, it's me again. What are you sniffing at there? Mmm, the most beautiful girls of the play, Talpa. Oh well, that's none of your business. Where can I find our leaders? Why this silly question? Everybody knows where the council room of the old ones is. Go bother someone else. I'm busy. A nice magazine you've got there for sniffing. Does your superior know about that? Okay, okay, I've got it. I'll show you the way, but then please leave me in peace. Ah, now I've got you. Come out, you villains, and hand over my magic hat at once, unless you really want to get to know me. Oh, hello. Who are you? You can't fool me, scoundrel. It was you who arranged my kidnapping and the theft of my hat, too. I'll really kick your butt now. There, there, young sorcerer's apprentice. You've obviously managed to escape from the island. We wouldn't have thought you capable of that. Obviously, you. We must expect more of you than we'd have thought possible. Indeed, and you can expect a lot of bruises if you don't answer me at once! Why are you sitting here in this dim light on those strange columns? We're the wise old ones. All those with a request which nobody else can solve come to us. Now that you say it, I suddenly realize it. Apart from the agents, nobody's come for a long time. From here, we watch over Talpaville, the city of moles, and see to it that our people are prospering. It's been a long time since I've been to the city center. How about you? How are our people doing, anyway? From here, we've also seen the danger coming from space. We have? 
Wasn't that the star seers? I was going to say they're underground. Hand over my hat, you black little blind furballs. There, there, young sorcerer's apprentice. We needed your hat to find out. Find out how this wondrous inventory of yours worked. We plan to duplicate it. We've succeeded at that. So you can have it back now. I thought the duplication failed. And besides, we wanted to prevent the Nihonians, who've already got their eyes on you, to recognize you by your hat. All was done for your protection only, young Simon. Hmm. Did I get that right? You've done what to my hat? Calm down, young friend. Calm down. Nothing's happened to your hat. Hey, there was more stuff in it. Where's my cool remote control? Speak, you fox niblets. Well, it was already gone when we found the hat. Wait, didn't they actually steal the hat from us? What do those green-skinned grinners want from me anyways? We only know that you're the object of their desire, and that the Nihonians will do everything in their power to get you. Why, however, well, even we can't figure that out yet. It must be because of the artificial intelligence in his hat. I can't imagine anybody would be interested in this insolent lout. Those green grinning little men may be disgusting, but they've obviously got good taste. There isn't much intelligence in this hat. So those aliens with the evil grins are called Ninonians? Yes, yes. That's what we were saying. How do we know their name anyway? I thought one of our technicians thought that up. They're called Nihonians, and they'll destroy the world. First, they're going to decimate us using their bad luck waves that they've created by focusing their telepathic powers on their weapons. And they'll see to it that we can't put up any resistance and then and then oh, don't fall asleep now when it's getting interesting wake up don't scream like that i'm right here well where were we oh all right after that, they'll lay waste to the whole planet by shooting a bad luck wave of gigantic proportions right out of their eye of death. You should tell him that the eye of death is a Nihonian capital spaceship. Thanks for the advice. The Eye of Death is a gigantic Nihonian mothership, a star of death. Our world is on the brink of destruction, and this furball's name seems to be Mr. Motionless Mole. The Nihonians attack! The world is on the brink of destruction, and you guys are just sitting here and doing nothing! Of course we're doing something. We're talking to you at this very moment, for instance. According to the reports of our agents, the Eye of Death has been seen already. Well, that's great news. And what are you going to do now? Not us. You. You'll stop the Nihonians by causing chaos and panic aboard the Eye of Death and by shutting down its central source of energy. 
You're able to do that, right? I even think that's his area of expertise. Hmm. Be a hero? Save the world? I don't have to think twice about that. That's clearly a job for Simon the Glorious. I just wonder how much of this is actually true, or if it's going to be one big misunderstanding. I guess we will find out soon. How can I get aboard that Eye of Death? Well, young sorcerer's apprentice, your deductive mind will certainly find a way aboard the Eye of Death. We're absolutely sure about that. We should give him a communicator. And maybe a dictionary of foreign words so he can look up deductive. That's a good idea. Please give Simon a communicator so we can get in contact at all times. And to make sure everything goes to our satisfaction, these two of our agents will accompany you. And how am I supposed to get into space? Wait, I've got it. I'll take the black pair and just row through the atmosphere. That's a very good idea. Hey, I was just kidding. Unfortunately, we don't have any resources left to build a spaceship for you. That mad inventor is rather imaginative, though. Here. Take this blueprint for a spaceship that can be assembled from wood and old scrap. Oh well. What one doesn't do to save the world. Well, here we are. We're not going to back out, but remember, we're watching your steps very closely. Don't mess around. I never mess around. I'm practically known as Mr. Never Mess Around. You can ask whoever you want. We've already done that. Attention, attention. Here's another special announcement brought to you live today by Magic World Royal Radio. By now, there's hundreds of flying saucers in the sky. A dark round object, similar to a moon, is up there as well, becoming larger and larger. Whatever it is, it's closing in! Oh, that's the ugliest garden gnome I've ever seen. The alien forces are leaving a wake of destruction wherever they appear. Those moles seem to have lost this. A ballpoint pen from one of those talking ancient moles. It's damn heavy. Apart from that, it looks rather normal. The aliens seem to be Hello? operating in patrol. Hello? Does this thing even work? Commando Black Pelt to Dumb Dog. We can hear you loud and clear. Where is the elephant in the ointment? Any news, you felt balls? No new data. Over and out. Attention, attention. Here's another special announcement brought to you live today by Magic World Royal Radio. If you see weird, non-human beings that don't appear to be inhabitants of the magic Looks like world, a blueprint for a spaceship. And in an orderly Please don't panic. I repeat, under any circumstances, don't panic. We have a very chassis radio. Oh, there's a big red button on this pen. Let's see what happens if I press it. Oh. Ooh, I wish I'd had a pen like that in school. Just now, we're receiving a message from the royal castle. The king is missing. His whereabouts are unknown. The entire court has disbanded. Only a few single persons are... I wonder what exactly exploded. Oh, Red Riding Hood, Red Riding Hood is back. And it seems like we have ditched the backpack finally. Anyway, let's go see Peach again. Ah, Simon the Sorcerer, what can I do for you? Hey, Dr. Peach, you're an inventor, aren't you? Could you quickly assemble a spaceship for me? Boy, you make me very, very happy indeed. 
I've been waiting for a triple darned eternity to build a spaceship and explore the vastness of outer space. Unfortunately, I've never found an investor who would make it possible for me to properly deal with plans for a spaceship. Uh, investor? But of course, you ordinary seaman. Do you think plans like that just draw themselves? I'll definitely need 1,000 doubloons for that, and that's not even including the interior decoration. How are you paying? Cash, credit, or check? Forget it. I don't have that much. But, surprise, I have complete finished plans for a top-notch spaceship. Zounds, now there's a bright lad. Let's see if it's worth something, kiddo. Well, these plans do save us a lot of work, even if they're obviously not as good as if I'd drawn them myself. Just between the two of us, sorcerer. Who did you steal them from? I drew them myself. Sounds, I like you, boy. <laughs> I really do. You're not even too yellow to trot out a walloping lie like that. Well then, let's see. I'll send a mail order for the needed parts to Federal Excess. The whole caboodle will cost about 5,000 doubloons. Um... That might be a bit of a problem. Couldn't you do with 1,000 doubloons? You mean if we reduce the sick bay to a box of band-aids and substitute the great LCD screen with my old TV? Also, the ship won't have any hydrogen cooling, making re-entry into the atmosphere a rather overheated affair. Well, that's a start. But even 1,000 gold pieces are more than I have. How about 500 doubloons? Well, if you'd really want to go without a hydraulic brake certified by the DMV DVLA, without an energy shield based on nano laser technology, without highly precise beam weapons, and without an artificial intelligence unit with an IQ over 100. Oh, it's all the same to me. I don't have enough anyway. Come on, 100 doubloons are more than enough. 100? For God's sake! Then I'd have to substitute the gamma ray shielding for a mixture of sawdust and leaden junk. And the ship's AI would have the intelligence of a chimpanzee. Ah, what am I saying? Even then it wouldn't work. Calm down, I don't have enough gold anyways. How much do you actually have? Well, to be honest, none. By all the manta rays of the seven seas, then it'll all come to nothing. Sorry, chappy, but I have to make ends meet somehow. I thought that chimpanzees were quite intelligent. But maybe not suitable for an AI. Come on, Doc, old buddy, help me build that spaceship for free. This is about the fate of the magic world, after all. What good is the fate of the magic world if I can't pay my rent and get kicked out of this hut? You're paying rent for this hovel? But of course. The almighty Stonehead demands monthly payments, volcano insurance included. Why don't you ask those moles for gold? They're the ones who insist I fly into space. Those small devils already horn-swoggled me once. They try paying me with mealworms, telling me they're a delicacy when candied. Towns, I'm through with them. Well, actually, I'm just a little short at the moment. How about I give you the gold at the beginning of the next month? I promise. Sorry, kiddo, but never mix gold with friendship. Can't you improvise somehow and build a ship without additional costs? Inventors are supposed to be able to easily pull off stuff like that. <sighs> Don't think it's as easy as that, kiddo. Well, if one takes the Nightingale thesis to its natural conclusion, and ignores the constant of improbability, and if those wormhole worms don't thwart our plans, and if I can put old cans of soup here, and second grade rivets there, and the sawdust, I could actually improvise here and there. The biggest problem at the moment is the missing hull for the ship. I can put together a propulsion system for a song, just a hundred doubloons. 
But even with that, you're ruining me, you know. Try to find a hull for the ship, kiddo. And don't forget the gold. Meanwhile, I'll take care of the propulsion system. Oh, and you should also look for a crew. You'll need at least three more people to help steer the ship. But three really is the bare minimum. Optimally, you'd muster a crew of 20 able-bodied seamen. Hey, Dr. Peach, I'm still looking for a crew member for my journey into space. Are you in? With a 5,000 doubloon ship, my answer would have been yes. Upon my soul, even with a 1,000 doubloon ship. But this way? No. Okay, let's go and find some seamen. <laughs>